in here? Uh, wait here, Mr. Morris. I think the light switch should be somewhere <sighs> over here. Well, uh, why did I have to get roped into this? <gasps> uh, what was that? Uh. <laughs> Who's there? Get me out! Get me out of here! <laughs> did you really think you'd get away, Morris? <laughs> <laughs> You, you've got the wrong guy! It wasn't me! I, I, I'm not the killer! <laughs> you know, Eliza died a far more heroic death than this. She fought your assassin to the end to save the children she had hidden beneath the floorboards. <laughs> that is Eliza's pendant. The one with a photo of you two inside. The one you gave her. Ring any bells? It's a fake! It has to be! There's no way! No way your assassin didn't destroy it, you mean? <laughs> Did you ever love her, Morris? Or was killing her always the plan? No, 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 please! Listen to me! I told Eliza to keep us a secret! I paid her plenty for her silence! I never thought she'd keep the child! Everything was going to come out, and I had no choice. She forced my hand. No. I'm making you. I have money. Just, just name your price, please. You can keep your Mora, and you can go to hell. <laughs> I'm Captain Shavraz of the Special Patrol. Morris, you're under arrest for Eliza's murder. Huh? You're under arrest too, Prop Manager Veronique. Or perhaps I should call you the Second Musketeer. Wait, what's going on? This wasn't in the script. Drop the gun, Veronique. Why? Why would you keep me from exacting revenge on this heartless monster? Drop your weapon. This is my final warning. <sighs> what? What is going on? Do I have to spell it out for you, Morris? Everything that took place just now was staged to get you to confess the truth. But this last part is all improv, of course. <sighs> uh, Shivras, you told us you wanted us to help you stage a play. You never said anything about the second musketeer! It's because even I had no way to confirm my theory until now. Thank you for your performance, Yoimiya. Could I trouble you to go and bring in the other Special Patrol members? They should be on standby just outside. Oh, and please tell the other cast members not to worry about us. We'll be rejoining them shortly. On it! So what do you think, Morris? Care to talk about what happened 20 years ago? <laughs> My patience is limited, you know. Don't force me to take you back to the interrogation room. I'd wager that you wouldn't last for more than a minute in there. With the recording we made, you have no chance of winning in court. Cooperating with us now is the most practical move. All right. I'll talk. I hired an assassin to murder Elisa. She once worked as a maid on my family's estate. She was very beautiful, and after some time, I fell for her. We kept our relationship a secret and carried out an affair for some time, but it wasn't long before she became pregnant. And if my parents ever found out, they would have stripped me of my inheritance and status, driven me out of my home. I also didn't expect Elisa to insist on bringing the pregnancy to term. She even asked me to leave my family and travel far, far away with her. 
She believed that you were truly in love with her. I didn't have a choice. I gave her a large sum of Mora, told her to leave the family and to get rid of the baby. But then years later, she sent me a letter that there were photos of two children and she even asked if I could find some time to visit them. Huh? Two children? Paimon thought Baptiste was the only... Uh, you mean... Even if she had the children against your will, you could have just ignored the letter entirely. Why kill her? I had just gotten engaged to be married to an heiress from another wealthy family. So if anyone were to find out about Elisa, my life would be completely ruined. I didn't have a choice. No, you always had a choice. You just made the wrong choice. Again. <sighs> Do you know how it feels to watch your mother be killed right in front of you? My brother and I were hardly even school age yet. We were hidden beneath the floorboards, grasping each other's hands like a lifeline. We were so terrified that we didn't even know we could ever take a breath. All we could do was to watch Mother try to fight back and then collapse to the floor. Even after the assassin left, we were still too terrified to leave our hiding spot. We thought that he might come back. It was only until the next evening when we finally climbed out and gathered around our mother. But she had already become cold and stiff to the touch. You made up your mind right then and there to bring this case to light. Not only that, we resolved to get our revenge. And that's why you became the Musketeers. No, that's why I became a Musketeer! The man from before was also killed by me. My brother had nothing to do with it. I figured as much. Uh, you did? I once told these two that he didn't look like a killer to me. His confession from that night also rubbed me the wrong way. I think what really tipped me off was, how could I not feel a sense of regret in him? Huh? He confessed faster than any criminal I've ever met, but he didn't say a single word about you. He insisted that he was the sole perpetrator in the case. But after the questioning ended, I disassembled the musket we dug up from his backyard, put it in front of him, and told him to reassemble it. Wanna guess how far he got? <laughs> He had no idea where to even start. He's never touched a gun in his life. Based on that, I determined that he was not acting alone. He only surrendered himself to draw our attention and create a moment of opportunity for his partner. So, I decided to play along. And as expected, the second musketeer followed us without hesitation once she saw Morris get separated from the rest of the cast. Besides, why else would he call the novel The Two Musketeers? But how did you know it was Veronique? I figured it out the moment Baptiste told me his father's name. That so-called financial crisis was all just a ruse. He just wanted to sign up as the investor and then leave the film without any source of funding. After all, he has a vested interest in minimizing the reach of this story. It's really just the same thing as what he did to Elisa all those years ago. Human scum. But then Xavier pulled out all the stops and got the film made against all odds. Morris couldn't have that. With the killer in custody, he figured it was safe to act. And so he came to visit the set today, just as I expected. Wait, so you were behind all those mishaps today? <gasps> as for the identity of the second musketeer, I assumed they'd probably stay close to Morris and look for an opening. And if they already knew that Morris was the film's investor, then that narrowed the list of potential suspects as well. Furthermore, being the props manager would allow the culprit to avoid scrutiny by purchasing mechanical parts in the name of the crew. With that hypothesis in mind, I went back to check Baptiste's orphanage adoption records. Guess whose name I saw on the same page, just a few lines from his. <sighs> My brother. He trusted you. 
As in he trusted me to perform the deed on his behalf? He trusted you to stand on the side of justice! I am. I thought you could do it as well! Oh, the look on your face when you told him to go to hell. I really thought you'd put a bullet in his brain. <sighs> you know what he has done! Are you telling me that you'd rather see him spend the rest of his life living like a king in the fortress of Meripede? I will never be able to forget the feeling of my mother's cold, lifeless hands. And you would call this ending fair? Is this what you call justice? I won't lie, Veronique. I did hesitate when your brother first told me about the truth. I wondered. I agonized over whether I should really put a bullet in his head. So why don't you? Because that should never be how justice is carried out in this world. Perhaps, to you, justice is simply reciprocated. An eye for an eye, and a life for a life. But everyone has their own understanding of justice. If everyone were to pursue their own definition of it, there would be no more order in this world. Today, you'll kill Morris. And tomorrow, his children may come for you. The world cannot render judgments based on a desire for revenge. That will only lead to a cycle of revenge as well as the destruction of order and civilized society. Fontaine is founded on a set of laws and a standardized code of justice. That is why we are the nation of justice. But with all that said, I will promise you this. Morris will not lead a cushy life in the fortress of Meripede. Chivalrous, the rest of the special patrol is here. Thank you so much, Yoimiya. Letelier, Terena, please take them away. I still can't agree with your reasoning. I know. Justice has not been delivered. At least, not today. Chevres. Let's go. We should give an explanation to the crew. Thank you for your concern. I'm fine. I'm just thinking about the things in life that have driven people to take justice into their own hands.